Greetings from Bethel Memorial Baptist Church. We had our prayer meeting again this evening, and we were blessed to have about 15 people there to pray and praise God and for the ways he's answered prayer and continue to lift up important prayer requests for our people. At the beginning of the time, I shared a little bit about the gospel writer Mark. I had started a series on the gospel writers a couple of weeks ago, but with some of the happenings in the news, I decided to set that aside to comment on some things that I thought would be appropriate to give us biblical uh, truth to hold on to as we watch what's happening in our country at this time. But Mark, Mark is one that I like uh, to consider, particularly because there are times when I feel like I failed. And I wonder, have I failed to the point where I, there's just nothing else to do? As I went into this COVID-19 stay-at-home order, lockdown, whatever you want to call it, I thought, well, this will be a time to kind of work out of home and get some things done around the home. I have files, filing cabinets of files that needed to be cleaned up. I, I know that the uh, government allowed us to delay our taxes until July 15th, but I determined I'm going to get them done at least by June 15th to give myself a, a good month to wait. Well, I actually was a day late and got them filed yesterday on the 16th, just recognizing sometimes your plans don't go well. But I want to encourage you tonight that we've been through a lot. We've been through some very difficult times of just figuring things out. I've, I've three prayer requests that I've had that people would be physically well, that they'd be financially well, and that their faith would be well through this. And we just recognize it's not always been easy. Forgetting to bring your mask along, uh, forgetting to do all the things that you need to do and you don't want to go to the grocery store too much and you go and you come home and realize you forgot something. Everything just seems a little bit more pressured. But no matter how well you've handled this time, you need to know that God's mercies are new tomorrow morning. They're new for us every day. We sang a new song in our uh, Sunday services this past week. Um, His grace is more. His mercy is more. His mercy is more. We need to recognize that. So I want to think about that in the life of Mark. He had to learn that through some failures, through some difficulties, he, he, he persevered and God used him and blessed him. Let's pray before we look at some verses together. Father, I thank you. I thank you for your love. I thank you that you're a patient God. You know our frame. You remember we are dust. Jesus, you walked in the weakness of the flesh and yet you being God were able to overcome and live a perfect life. Help us to know that we cannot live perfectly, but we can live walking in the spirit and you will empower us to do what you call us to do. I pray that you would bless us. I pray that you would reveal yourself as just as we consider the life of Mark at this time. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. One of the first places we see Mark is in Acts chapter 12. There's a couple of things going on there, but we see early on he is recognized by leaders. When Barnabas and Saul had finished their mission, they returned from Jerusalem, taking with them John, also called Mark. What was their mission? There was a famine, and um, a gift was sent from the church at Antioch down to the Jerusalem church, and they went down there. They had heard about Mark. Someone told them about John, Mark, they, and they decided to take, them, take him back with them to Antioch. That could be kind of a heady thing to think about, wow, they, you know, these, these leaders have recognized something in me, and that could, that could get you started saying, I, I like that encouragement. I want to do big things. And then we see that when they were called to go on their missionary journey in Acts 13, the two of them, this is Paul, uh, Saul, and Barnabas, sent on their way by the Holy Spirit, went down to Seleucia and sailed from there to Cyprus. John was with them as their helper. Now, just so you know, just like Saul had a Hebrew, Saul was uh, Paul's Hebrew name and Paul was more of his Latin name, John was John's Hebrew name and Mark was his Latin name. And they just, decided, depending on who they were with, would emphasize one word over the other. But John Mark, John Mark was asked to go on the second missionary journey, um, first, first missionary journey. And they, he joined them in Cyprus. He was there because he was willing to help and the leaders had recognized him. But when they were ready to leave Cyprus, it says in Acts 13, 13 from Paphos, Paul and his companions sailed to Perga and Pamphylia, where John left them to return to Jerusalem. Don't know all the details there, but John left. John Mark left Paul 
and Barnabas. He wasn't ready to go on. You know, sometimes we come to a place where we realize, I still have a lot to learn. I'm glad these people saw something in me and I'm willing to help, but right now this is not the right thing for me. And he stepped back and he went back home. Did that create problems? You'll see. Um, when uh, Barnabas and Saul, or now being called Paul, wanted to go out on a second missionary journey after a, a ministry and, and going to Jerusalem again, uh, Barnabas wanted to take John. He, all, he wanted to take John Mark with him. He's also called Mark with them, but Paul did not think it wise to take him because he had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in the work. Sometimes our past uh, decisions, actions, bring limitations to our present. Barnabas, uh, John Mark had to accept that. Uh, Saul, Paul does not want to take me. Paul doesn't want me along. Well, praise the Lord. When that happens, you need to recognize there's some place for you to be. And Barnabas decided that it said they had such a sharp disagreement that they parted company. Barnabas took Mark and sailed for Cyprus. He went back to the place where Mark had already ministered. And he said, we're going to go back and encourage these ministers, the, uh, the believers there. So Paul will go where he's going. I'm going to go to Cyprus and I'm going to continue to work with Mark. And Mark was able to be there. Now, we don't know all the things that happened to John Mark, but we know that in 2 Timothy, at the end of Paul's life, at the end of his life, uh, he was going to be murdered. He was going to be put to death from that prison that he was in. He said, only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you because he is helpful to me in my ministry. I just think about the persistence of Mark, that he didn't give up, whether he had a stumble, whether he caught, imagine being the reason that Barnabas and Paul separated, this great missionaries, first great missionaries, and yet there was a purpose in it. It wasn't his fault. God was using the situation to raise up new leaders and new servants, and Mark was faithful, even to the point, I don't know how many times he was connected to Paul, but Paul had learned he is somebody that is helpful in ministry. And then I love the fact, the reason we have the gospel of Mark is because Mark had a close relationship with the apostle Peter. Peter in his uh, first epistle said, she who is in Babylon chosen together with you sends you her greeting, and so does my son Mark. There's a lot of ways you can refer to somebody, but if you refer to him that way, that shows a close relationship. Peter was working with Mark. He was mentoring Mark. Mark ministered with Peter, and because of that, Mark was able to hear all the stories that Peter would recount about Jesus' life. So I don't know where you are right now as you think about where we're headed as a country, what you're able to do, what you're not able to do, but don't lament your past failings. Don't lament problems from your past. Look forward and say, God, what is it that you want? Because Mark had to learn not to give up. Don't give up. Yeah, but the apostle Paul says, I'm not. No, don't give up. And he continued to serve. Also, don't be labeled by others. There's no person on this earth that knows what God knows about you. You need to let God define who you are. You need to walk closely with him so that you should, need not be labeled by what others say about you. And the last thing, a little bit repetitive of the don't give up, keep on serving. If you're familiar with Mark's gospel, it's a series of stories that are just connected with a, with a word like straightway, or it, it just kind of connects a lot of things and saying immediately, so different translations use a different word. But the idea is that from this, Jesus did this. From this, he just did that. And he didn't really, the emphasis in the gospel of Mark is that Jesus is a servant. He was a servant. And he just went from place to place, person to person, serving them. And I think Mark took that to heart. As he, as Paul said, he's helpful. He's helpful to me in service. He was a helpful servant of God. And I hope that you can be too. as we. See what comes in the days ahead. I pray that you would recognize there are always, there's always a new day to get up in the mercies of God and begin serving him. Don't give up. Don't let others define you. Keep on serving. Father, I thank you for just the encouragement we have from, from real people. Your Bible is full of real people. We don't, you don't hide things from us. You let us see their flaws and their sins, and, and, and that just shows us all the more your grace. I pray that you would help us to know you better at this time, that 
as we move forward in the days ahead, however things are going to go, how fast things are going to go, how slow they're going to go, help us to know you have a plan and we just simply need to trust in you. Thank you, dear Jesus. It's in your name I pray. Amen. I pray that you are well. I pray that you are blessed.